Blind Spot Episode 17, Man's Loyal Telepathic Lookout. I have to look at it. Man's Telepathic Loyal Lookout. It's a really weird name. Um, I enjoyed this episode. I thought it was actually pretty fun. I think they did a lot of surprising stuff in this one. I didn't expect them to bring, like, the DA guy that was um, blackmailing Zapata. I, even with the way they brought him in, was even more surprising because either he knew about that place ahead of time or he was telling her. And I'm not sure which is worse. I feel like he might be might have been telling her, but it seemed like she was there for quite a while. Like, oh, she was winning and stuff. Like, he might have other people be like, hey, this is, you know, the random person you're blackmailing. Like, he gave other people a list or something. So the way that he showed up, I thought was actually kind of cool. Like, I, I thought they were just showing that, like, okay, she's gambling. It's her vice, of course. And then he showed up. I was like, okay, he either knew about it beforehand. He's following her. But it seemed like she'd been there long enough, so it wasn't like he, you know, she went right in and he didn't follow right after. She clearly had won a couple of times. And it, it just seemed interesting. Like, how the heck was he there? He either knew about it ahead of time or someone phoned in, like, you know, this is what's happening. But I like that idea, and we find out that he decided to move on uh, from Carter's investigation to Mayfair. And they did something really nice in this episode with that little bit of dialogue he had with Zapata, because he, he's like, you know, we're moving on from Carter, and we're moving on to Mayfair, because she had this ex-girlfriend who, you know, they used to work together, and suddenly she died, and in this explanation he, he gives Zapata, he's like, oh, it happened, you know, the way that she died was almost exactly the same as Carter, and I was like, hmm, I don't think they mentioned that before, she, you know, somebody killed her, I assumed it was like a government type of thing because it was within the government. And then he's like, oh, it happened, you know, her car was like dumped in the water or something like that or found near the water or whatever. And he's like, you know, insanely, insane coincidences and it's almost exactly the same. I was like, huh, well, we know exactly who killed Carter. So it makes me wonder, you know, kind of what the deal was with that. Like, why did they kill May first girlfriend if, you know, that was kind of her plan? And I believe... It was, um, it was, like, supposed to be a suicide or something like that. That's what it looked like, I guess. And then, if I remember, and I'm hoping I'm remembering that right, that it was believed that it was actually a suicide, that she killed herself. And then it's like, oh, her car is found in almost the exact same way. And it just begs the question, like, why did they, you know, kill her off? Maybe they could just get to her because she was, you know, taken off and they couldn't get to Carter and Mayfair at that time. But it just seemed interesting. It was like, why was she targeted? So, I thought that was very cool. I was like, okay, that's a little bit of added information. Even if it was known that she was dead, like I said, I can't really remember from that specific episode. But either way, it kind of it tells us who did it. So now the question is why? Because, well, obviously, you know, basically all the tattoos are like kill, or, well, either kill or capture the bad guys. But um, outside of this mission with Jane, it seems like it's always kind of kill the bad guys, really. So that may have been the way they saw it in the past. But... I thought that was cool, a nice little touch as to, you know, what they might kind of reveal either to Mayfair or about Mayfair and, you know, that whole thing that she's involved in. So looking forward to that. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, the main story I actually enjoyed. I think Patterson going on like this crazy mission, you know, on her own, which was definitely insane. I thought it was actually pretty fun. You know, she's um, seeing David and... You know, it was nice to see that actor. I think he's a good actor. So it was cool to kind of have that back and forth, even though, of course, technically it wasn't him. But it was nice. I thought it was nice. You know, she's figuring out all these puzzles and stuff. She gets to the guy's um, warehouse, or his, like, his little shop. I don't know why I said warehouse. But she gets to, like, his shop and everything, and it seems fine. And I guess I knew he was the crazy one because of the trailers, because, of course, that was the big thing. Like, she goes on this mission by herself. And then she gets captured. So I was like, this is definitely the guy that captures her. And we find out, you know, the whole mission that's involved in it, which initially, which they did they did a really cool thing with that, where, you know, it was the tourist, and she's like, crap, you know, we've figured this out already. And then it turns out that um, on its own, the tourist is actually, you know, a totally different case. So I thought that was actually really cool. It was like, you know, they used the tourist and something else together and it was mixed in with the symbols and the words but the tourist by itself was also something so that was actually pretty good and so she goes through finds this guy super crazy she gets lost the team's like something crazy is happening fortunately um as Zapata put it she wasn't very popular in school and she you know like stars so that's how they end up finding her very um sort of ex machina style it's just like poof here's the answer 
Um, so that was pretty fortunate, but of course, even with them knowing that that's the right location, they don't end up saving Patterson in that moment because she's been knocked out and taken way out to, I believe it was like on Long Island or something like that, like just some open space really. So that was a cool way to kind of end off the episode. It was, um, it was fairly intense. You know, I figured that she'd survive. I didn't think anyone was, was actually going to die. But it was still cool the way they did it. Because she's out just in the snow. And it's freezing. Like, she's almost dying at the end of this episode. She doesn't have any shoes, any socks, any, like a jacket or anything. And she's just trying to survive in the cold. And then the team gets to her. And we get the whole story about the guy that kidnapped her. And how he was... Like, this serial killer who killed, like, a bunch of students that he had, and his brother, who was, like, the rising politician, he kind of got it all swept under the rug and was basically a puppet for, you know, big ph a big pharmaceutical company. And it was a nice way to do it. It was, like, a nice sort of backwards play, I guess, on how they normally do it, of course. It's like, this is everything that happened, then we stop him. So it was... It was pretty fast. Like, it was still technically that way, where it was like, this is all the information about these people, and then, you know, they still went to stop them. But I thought it was cool. It was kind of weird seeing it at the end, um, especially because in this episode, I feel like Weller was actually in it the least, which was really interesting, because I noticed that towards the end, because they had the stuff with Zapata. Um, they had a lot of stuff with Reed. There was, I feel like it was mostly, like, Reed and Patterson, really, this episode. And... You know, Weller had, like, he had a moment, like, they had the moment of him, and of course I can't remember the woman that he's with right now, um, but they had the scene of them, uh, like, making out in bed and stuff, and then the scene, um, where he's, like, celebrating that he and his father are actually getting closer, and then, of course, the ending, where his father may or may not be dying, uh, in the next episode, hopefully not, that would be a sad episode, but, you know, they have that as well, so he wasn't really in it a lot, he was in, you know, a couple scenes, and then, like, the main case is kind of, like, every character, so it's not, like, a specific focus on him, so when they had the scene at the end, he's, like, giving out orders at, like, the very end of the episode, I was like, this feels really weird, because it's happening, you know, right at the end, basically, of the episode, so that was kind of interesting, just, uh, the way they styled the episode, because it, it was still a mission, like, every other week, but, it was, you know, really just Patterson. It was, like, her story this episode. And I enjoyed that. I thought it was really fun. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, the way they solved the case is fairly simple. You know, they go out and find her. They have to... They killed the... I guess he was the older brother. I'm pretty sure he was. He had gray hair, but that technically doesn't really mean much. But I'm assuming the older brother. They killed the killer, so that's really, I guess, the important part of it. Killed him, arrested the brother, saved Patterson, solved the case, and you know, that was it, you know, everything was fine, and everything gets resolved, and then, you know, around that, it was, you know, where all the issues were, and of course, like, the ending of this episode for Weller, and, you know, possibly losing his father, I think that's a, that was a very interesting way to end it, uh, we of course have Reed telling Mayfair everything that happened, so, he knows something's really crazy, because he gets the phone call after being, um, with Weller's sister, I told, I want to say Sarah, um, but he gets the phone call, like, they send him a phone, and it also, I don't know, I mean, it was a flip phone, so I guess, but, like, as soon as he opens it, picture's just right there, like, boom, here's the picture, we saw what you did, um, and then they call him, and it's like, we told you not to look into it, and then he's getting blackmailed even worse, where he finds out that Mayfair actually requested to get the footage, and then we find out that they can't actually, you know, you can't actually see anything anyway, so I, I'm guessing you know, when he went to actually delete the footage, he did it too late, and she'd already printed it out and seen it, because it's like, you know, I, there's nothing to figure out anyway, so it's like, what is the point, what was the point of all the blackmail, and maybe it was just to see what they could do, like, how far they could push him, but, I don't know, I mean, it makes sense as a test, if they feel like there's a case that's really worth, you know, the blackmail, they could definitely do it later, and, you know, now Mayfair knows that Reed's been you know, basically compromised, like, he's been, uh, he's gonna have to have a detail on him, uh, as well as Sarah, so, we'll see where that goes, because it's like, once they said that, it's like, well, if you can't find anything anyway, that they probably should have known, because, I mean, they have all these crazy ties, like, they knew he was looking into it, they, I'm assuming they knew he was getting close, it was like, right when he was, like, crap, we, you know, found the guy so we can get a picture of him, right when that happens, that's when it's like, hey, you need to back off. So they have to know exactly what everyone can see. And obviously they have someone within the FBI. So 
it was just interesting. It was like, it, it makes it like an even bigger mystery of why they were doing it. Because before it seemed pretty cut and dry. It was getting too close to the information. And then it's like, well, it's not even really information. They can't really see anything. So, not sure what the case is with that. But I'm looking forward to where they take it for sure. And who knows what's going to happen with Zapata and Mayfair. Like, I don't think Mayfair, outside of, of course, the whole cover-up thing in the past... Obviously, she's not the one that killed Carter. So I, it seems like that's what the guy was kind of hinting at. Obviously, like, oh, her girlfriend died just like Carter died. Crazy. So that's kind of what they're going for. But obviously, she's not the one that did it. But generally, if you look for one thing, you could probably find something else. Especially if it's as big as, you know, what they were trying to hide in the past. So looking forward, you know, to this next episode for sure. Definitely want to know what you guys thought about it. So please comment below. Let me know your favorite parts, your least favorite parts. And I definitely got to ask what you guys think is going to happen with Mayfair because, you know, she's kind of got her ties with Reed now where they were the ones kind of looking into Jane and, you know, now she knows about the blackmail and the fact that there's some mole in some facet of the FBI. And, of course, we have the DA and Zapata kind of looking at her now. So there's just a lot of stuff. And, of course, Reed and Zapata have that weird scene where he's like, you know, he freaks out. It's like, you spying on me and stuff? It's like, okay, I was just asking a question, but clearly something weird is going on. So that might actually get her on board a little bit to kind of look into Mayfair because things are just getting weird around them. So we don't, you know, a lot of different crazy emotions and mysteries going on abound. Some things we know that the characters don't know. Some things just nobody freaking knows, so we just have to wait and see. But... I definitely want to know what you guys think is going to end up happening uh, with Mayfair. I guess by the end of this season, they're probably going to wrap up most of those, if not all of the um, sort of investigation type storylines. But definitely want to know uh, your expectations for it. And of course, I want to know what you guys thought about this episode. So please comment below. Let me know. And thanks for watching.